Okay, so as a lot of people know, I made a big decision some time ago to go from 46 bass guitars to maybe 20, 15, 10. Uh, I've been having lots of conversations with friends of mine, like guys like Jack Daly, John Conti, and th these guys have uh, a lot more of a music career than I do at this point. So they don't have 46 basses. So they're like, do you really need to have everything? And it's a good point. I don't really need to have everything. Um, so my friend Julia gave me the permission to sell some basses. She said, only keep the ones that you really need. That's a good, that's good advice. But I, I guess I felt that I needed 46 basses. And then there's the Tom Semioli theory that says you really only need one bass, whatever that is. I think he believes it's a Fender jazz bass and with a Fender jazz bass, you could do everything. So anyway, I can't narrow it down to five. So I have to have six basses today. These are the six instruments that I will carry to my grave. And then when, I, when I'm gone, you know, they'll be sold or whatever. I might even leave some of them to, uh, in my will to, to certain players like Charles Lambiazzi. Um, and that's another point. If you're like pushing 60 like me and you have a family and you have a lot of possessions, there's nothing worse than the death of a loved one than when they pass and they have they don't have a will and you have to wonder what what you have to navigate through all that baloney now that's not, i'm not a lawyer i'm just <laughs> it's just a little piece of advice i'm in the process of making a will i'm in the process of taking care of business if something happens to me my loved ones won't have to say oh what did the uncle do you know okay so anyway here it is the big moment i should have done this a long time ago and a lot of these instruments are new instruments that I've, I've only had a couple of years, yet they've, they're have they so good that they've earned a top spot in my collection. So here's number six. It's a Lakeland USA hollow body. There's the, there's the front, there's the back. It has, when these were first put out, they, have, they had Bartolini pickups. And I have three hollow body bases. I have this, I have the Starfire, and I have the EB2. They're all great. Mike Mills made me make a choice. He said, you only need one. Mike Mills is a younger guy that I know that I've uh, taken uh, a liking to, and he, he knows a lot about buying and selling, and he's given me some good advice. So he told me to pick one. This is the one I choose. This is my favorite. And the good thing is the other two... Mike might buy my EB2, and of course it will be at my disposal if I really need it. And my friend John Cardone out on Long Island is uh, supposedly buying my Starfire next week. And he extended that to me. If I ever need it, just pick it up, you know, which is a great thing. On some of these new bases that I'm selling, my friend uh, Al Spawn has uh, decided to buy my 62 uh, Fullerton base, P base which I just used on some tracks for my friend Bing. But Al said, if you need it, you could, you know where it is. So how could I go wrong? I'm selling these instruments, and if I need them, I have access to them, like a bass lending library. So number six, my Lackland, hollow body, Lakeland, Lackland. This thing is just unbelievable. I, I couldn't live without it. Okay, so that's that one. What's next? Okay. My Oasis. Oasis. It looks like an Alembic, right? Because I believe it was made by an ex-Alembic employee by the name of Gary Cooper. Get, believe it or not, Gary Cooper and Louis Armstrong headed the Oasis Guitar Company. If you ever see a Cool in the Gang celebration video... That's this bass. I never knew what it was until somebody pointed it out to me. So I saw this one day and I had to grab it. I have an Alembic bass, but as you can see, I would keep this over my Alembic because I, I think it sounds better and I think it plays better. I just have to call it as I see it always. 
and I brought this into the studio not long ago and Steve Jankowski said it sounded great and you know he, he hears a lot of basses in his studio and he told me he made a note of this one so this is number five the Oasis four the 76 Gibson Thunderbird bought this at Rudy's Music a long time ago I used this bass live from like 2000 to 2012 this is like the only bass I use I use it with Genya Raven if you ever saw me with Genya Raven one time I brought this bass to a gig I played these younger guys and I went to I set my rig up this and my B15 on the stage and then I went to take a nap in my car come back to the stage and the people said Wow, we were really scared when we saw your equipment. And I said, why? And they said, because we said, this either this guy is really old or he's really cool. And I'm like, well, it seems that uh, it's both in my, in my case. So the Gibson Thunderbird. So we have so far the Lakeland Hollow Body, the Oasis Space, the Thunderbird. The, these are my bases to take to the grave. Another recent acquisition, thanks to my friend Ben from Ray Raydecker. This is a Yamaha BB-1000S, or as Charles Lambiazzi said, a sustain machine. As soon as I took this out of the box, I was like, this is a great bass. I can't believe I didn't have this bass all my life. Uh, I can't say enough about how great this instrument is. It sounds totally amazing. So thanks, uh, Ben, for finding this for me and showing me, uh, you know, the, the ad. to, And I got a really, really good deal on it. So that's the Yamaha. Next. My 73 Jazz Bass. This is a 1973. Now it's very white. I don't know what the deal is with it. As you can see, it's got like some chips. For all I know, this has been a refinish. I bought this from Daryl Gilbert. Hi, Daryl, what's up? In, in a long time ago, like 1985 or something like that. Um, I have another one and, and I, I could very well keep the black one, but this is the one that has the sentimental value to me because I recorded my first record uh, in the studio with my friend, Steve Ross for Shrapnel Records. This is what I use on that record. And uh, Don Sterniker was the engineer. He got such a great sound on that record, man. So this bass uh, is one that I will keep, keep bring to the grave. Okay, so we went through the Thunderbird, the Lakeland, the Jazz Bass, the Yamaha, the Oasis. And here it is. Everyone that knows me knows what they're gonna see now. My brown P bass, the 73 P bass. This is the one everybody likes. Andy Rothstein's favorite bass. It's my favorite bass too. People say to me, every time you have 46 basses, but every time you, you're using this one. So that's a good point. And that gets to the Tom Semioli theory of one bass is only necessary. So this is the, the only bass that I really could if I only had this, I would be fine. I could play anything with this bass. There are a lot of people out there that not only don't use fenders, but they like go out of their way to hate them. Like they're fender haters. They're like, oh, I, I hate fender. I don't you. You know, I have that attitude too. I like, as you could see, I have a lot of off the wall type of basses. But I remember reading in uh, in Guitar Player magazine a long time ago, Gordon Edwards interview. And he said, I use Fender. That's the proven product. It was all like in, highlighted. He said, I'll let you experiment, but I won't. And you know what? I found that there's a lot of truth to that. You could say all you want. I don't know, you know, if you're just fooling around or playing in your house or something. And, you know, it's fine to, to say that you don't like Fender or something like that. But 
I'm playing live since 1976. I've been in the studio and, and pretty much a lot of the top guys have Fender basses or variants of Fenders. You know what I'm saying? So this bass would be the only bass that I could have. Again, Tom Semioli's pick is the jazz bass. And that this also, all things considered, would probably be my, when someone comes to me and say, I want to play bass, what bass should I get? I usually say get a, a, a jazz bass because you could use this pickup only and it sounds very much like a P. You could use the back pickup and it's got the Jocko sound, you know, that mid-range thing. Or when I use this, I use both pickups and, you know, Getty Lee, Marcus Miller slapping. So those are my six bases that I don't intend to sell. Now I have other instruments that I don't intend to sell, but they're my most valuable instruments. That'll be another video. But I'm t these are instruments that I need to live my musical life and I don't want to part with them. So thank you for watching and thanks for to Julia for telling me I could sell some basses. <laughs>